Being awake means knowing the difference between what can not be changed versus what should be changed. Okay, now, a New Ager once told me, Mark, never... Now, listen to this statement, see if you could pick up the inherent contradiction in it. Before I started doing this series of lectures, somebody said to me, you should never say you should to anybody. <laughs> Think about that for a minute. You should never say you should to anybody else. This new age, the person who had bought into this new age nonsense had actually just broken the very thing that they told me never to engage in. Okay? Of course you should say you should not do something that is wrong to somebody else. The entire problem with the world is that too many people have sat back, watched violence and evil take place in their presence, and not said to the person that was engaging in it, you should not do that. That's why we're where we're at. <laughs> we need to know the difference between what cannot be changed and what should be changed. Okay? And I illustrate this concept with the original version, the original unadulterated version of Reinhold Niebuhr's Prayer of Serenity. This is given in a lot of the 12-step programs for alcoholism and other addictions, okay? But in those 12-step programs, it's completely watered down. It's changed. It's not Niebuhr's Prayer of Serenity. It's a, it's a variant of it. It's more like a plagiarism of it, if you will. Okay? They've tried to, to take most of his words, but they've changed enough of it that it completely changes the deep core meaning of this very, very uh, powerful uh, invocation. Okay? And here's how it went in the original before it was modified. God, give me grace to accept with serenity the things that can not be changed. The courage to change the things which should be changed and the wisdom to distinguish the one from the other. Now do you hear the difference in that verses? Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change the courage to change the things which I can change and the wisdom to know the difference, which is how they're teaching this, the variant that they're using in the 12-step programs. First of all, there's no word I in this prayer, okay? It's saying, give me grace. Let me accept grace from creation to accept with serenity, with surrender, the things that cannot be changed. And what are the things that cannot be changed? The laws of nature natural law, moral law. That's what has to be accepted with grace and serenity. Those are the things that cannot be changed by anything we are capable of doing. Those laws work that way 100% of the time flawlessly and unwaveringly. The next part of the prayer says, "Give me, grant me the courage to change the things which should be changed. That's saying, give me the courage to take action when I recognize injustice is taking place around me. And I'm going to change, try to change the things that should be changed. It's not about you on the microcosmic scale saying, can I change these things in my life? Can I not change these things in my life? It's not about you. This is, this is something that goes back. This isn't about self identification. This is about agape, wider care, universal care, about what's taking place in the world. That's what this prayer is about. Okay? To change the things which I know are wrong and should be changed. And the wisdom to distinguish what is that which cannot be changed in, in nature versus what should be changed in our experience here on earth. What, can, what is governed by free will, okay? Therefore, if we change the behaviors that we're taking through our free will, the manifested result can be different. That's what we should change. What cannot be changed, the laws of morality, they have to be accepted, they have to be harmonized with. Our behavior has to be harmonized with them. That's all we can do, is discover them and then live in harmony with them. 
So it's shortened often to accept what you can't change and change what you can't accept. And I can get behind that. That's a nice, simple, abbreviated version of that. It says it. While slavery, and this is all about distinguishing that one state from the other state. Is slavery the current human condition? Yes, it is. We have to recognize that. Okay? But the human condition that we are existing in right now can be changed. I'm not telling you it's going to be easy. Because that would be blowing smoke up your rear end. Okay? If I was a, a new ager, I'd tell you, hey, let's just all meditate in this room today and we'll change the world. It's not going to be that easy, folks. As a matter of fact, it's going to be a whole lot damn harder than all that. It's going to involve a lot of work and struggle and self-sacrifice and courage and persistence. Persistence. Constancy. Willpower. Effort. That's what it's going to take. That's what the great work to change the human condition is going to take. All that and then more. The laws of nature, however, cannot be changed. They are eternally set in stone, so to speak. They are what is there. It is going to be. It has been that way. It is this way now, and it is going to be this way. See, people get these things confused. They think we can change the law, but the human condition is eternal. It's exactly the other way around. The human condition can be changed, but true law cannot be changed. It's exactly the other way around from where most people have it in their mind. Oh, we can change that law, quote unquote, meaning man's law, you know. But oh, the human condition, you want to change that human beings exist in a state of slavery. Oh, that's always been that way. It is that way now, it's always going to be this that way. No. That's a choice. That's that way because of the behaviors that are in effect. And the natural law is bringing us the consequences of those behaviors. Well, when thinking that underlies behavior changes, the behavior will change and then the consequences will change and you'll get a different result. 